you didn't get a summer internship. Now, assuming you don't want that to happen again next year, here's exactly what you need to do. And no, there isn't a shortcut, but if you do all these things, you should have an internship this time next year. Okay, before you do anything else, let's do a little exercise. Take some time, maybe it's half an hour, maybe it's an hour, to think about why you didn't land an internship this past recruiting season. And if you're tempted to skip this because you think you know why you didn't get a job or because you think this is a waste of time, you should probably click off of this video because if you're not willing to do that, then you're not going to be willing to do any of the other things in this video. Okay, if you're still watching this, then that means you're one of the ones who's actually serious about trying to land an internship and putting in the hard work, which is going to be important. So when you're thinking about why you didn't land an internship this past recruiting season, try to be as objective as possible with yourself. It might be that your resume just wasn't strong enough, maybe your technical skills weren't up to snuff, uh, maybe you didn't apply to enough places or the right places, maybe you just flubbed all of your interviews, or anything else. There's a good chance it's not just one thing, there's probably a couple areas where you could use some work, but these are the points within that recruitment funnel where you're getting eliminated that are preventing you from making it all the way to getting the offer. This whole thing is going to require you to focus really aggressively on your weaknesses. You don't need to turn them all into strengths, but you need to get them to be good enough that you can one, get your foot in the door and actually land an interview, and two, have a fighting chance once you're in the interview. You might be assuming that you have a year to do all of this, or maybe a little bit less than a year, assuming you're watching this near the end of the spring semester, or maybe at the beginning of the summer. But the reality is companies are going to start posting listings for next summer's internships within the next few months. Okay, so hopefully you've taken some time to recognize your weaknesses, or you're gonna do that right after you finish this video. How do you actually fix them? So you can break things down into smaller chunks if you want, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna be splitting things into three main buckets, interviewing skills, strength on paper, and applying for roles. I'm gonna break down each of these and what worked for me, because at one point in college, all three of these were weak spots, and by the end, I turned them all into relative strengths. All right, when it comes to interviewing, there's two, probably really three things that you need to work on here, and that's gonna be different depending on where you struggle the most. If you're not the strongest developer, technically speaking, it's easy to feel like you're completely screwed. I get it. But the first two internships that I had back in college, neither of them made me demonstrate any of my technical abilities to actually get the job. Both of them were just a single phone call, not even a video call, and all we talked about were my experiences and what I would be doing as part of my internship. So the first way of dealing with this is basically avoiding it. I'm not really going to advocate for this strategy because even though it will work in some cases, a lot of places are going to make you write code in your interview, or you are going to have to demonstrate your technical ability and your expertise. And you also want to have a successful internship and hopefully get a return offer, and if you really don't have the technical chops for the job, it's just not going to go well. I'm going to give overly simplified advice here because this is not going to make you a great software engineer, I've talked about this in other videos, but it is going to help you land a job. Number one, know your data structures and algorithms inside and out. I don't care if you haven't learned this yet in school or if you had a bad professor who didn't do a good job of explaining it. There are so many resources available online and in books that you need to invest your time into really understanding the fundamentals, and not just the abstractions in libraries that you might use when you're coding in a language like Java or Python. Number two, practice coding problems. Now, these questions aren't representative of what you do as a software engineer. They're not gonna make you a great software engineer, but that's not what this video is about. It's about helping you get an internship and companies love to use these types of questions in their coding challenges. Get in the habit of doing a problem per day on sites like HackerRank or LeetCode and within a couple of months, you'll have tackled enough different types of problems that you should be able to deal with most things you'll encounter in an interview. You can also practice doing whiteboarding, which is useful and proves that you really know your stuff, but unless you're doing a flyout, you're probably not going to need to do this. So if you could take care of both of those things, you shouldn't have any issues in the technical area. I'm not saying you can get any job you want, but you should be able to clear the bar at a lot of places. Even if you can dance around a lack of technical skills, assuming someone doesn't just hand you a job, you're going to need behavioral skills. Regardless of whether or not you're specifically asked any behavioral type questions, you're having a conversation with another person, which means intentionally or not, they're going to be evaluating you to determine if you seem like you'd be a good fit within that team. Part of this is just coming in with the right attitude, seeming confident but not arrogant, uh, being naturally curious, not acting like a jerk, but the other side of this is preparing for the common behavioral questions. So if you haven't already crafted stories for all of these different types of questions, that's the first thing you should be doing. Unless you happen to be great at articulating your thoughts on the spot, which I most definitely am not, it makes a lot of sense to prepare for some of these common questions to think of 
what sorts of things you might want to say. Come up with how you're gonna provide a little bit of context, how you're gonna highlight your strong points, and how you're going to describe the impact of what you actually did. And once you have stories, you wanna practice delivering them. You can do this by yourself, but before you interview, you should do this at least once with someone else and treat it like an actual interview. By not winging this, your interview should go a lot smoother and you'll be able to really articulate your points a lot more clearly and concisely to really show off your strong points. Critical thinking questions might be the hardest to prepare for because they can really be about anything. They don't have to be about computer science. There's not an easy solution to this, but I do have two things I would recommend. Number one is just get some practice. There's lists of these types of questions online, and instead of focusing on getting the right answer, just practice reasoning through these types of problems. These problems require a different type of problem solving than something like doing leak code, and you wanna get some experience with doing on the fly reasoning before you have to do it in an interview. Number two, practice your stream of consciousness communication. Talk about the things you're accounting for, the things you're discounting, uh, the assumptions that you're making. The interviewer probably isn't that interested in how good you are at guesstimating and how close you are to getting the right answer. They wanna see your thought process and the way that you reason through problems. All right, let's move on to the next section, which is strength on paper. And this really consists of two main things, which is the contents of your resume and or your cover letter, and then the actual design itself of your resume. So the most important things on your resume are probably going to be some combination of education, uh, skills, and experience. And I would say of those three, the most important is probably going to be your experience. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably don't have prior professional experience, but you should still be listing all of your own projects down in the experience section. And if you don't have any of your own projects to put here and you haven't really done anything outside of class, then that's the next thing you should do. You can write something from scratch. I wrote a few basic iOS apps back when I was in high school and in college, or you can work on something with some friends, or you can just contribute to an open source repo. You wanna demonstrate that you've done things outside of your class-related assignments. It shows a lot of initiative to recruiters because they wanna see you're not just doing the bare minimum. You enjoy doing this, you do it in your spare time to push yourself, and you're also just gonna learn a lot. Working on a larger scale project is going to do a lot more for you than just doing these small bite-sized assignments that you generally get in your first couple of years of college. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, when it comes to the formatting, the spelling, the grammar on your resume or your cover letter, there is no excuse for it not to be perfect. Your resume is literally a professional representation of you on a piece of paper, and the last thing you want to do is to come across as sloppy or careless. You can use automated tools, swap resumes with a friend, uh, go to your college's resume review sessions if they have them. If you're just typing up your first draft of your resume and firing it off to employers, you really need to be planning on doing multiple iterations and tweaking all the little things that could be a little bit better or a little bit stronger until the whole thing is airtight. Your resume should also fit onto one piece of paper, not front and back, just one side of one sheet of paper. Presumably, if you're looking for an internship, that means you probably don't have that much experience yet. If you're taking more than one page, it means you're not cutting out all of the fluff, and you're not really focusing in on the things that are the most important, which are also the things that the recruiter cares the most about. Recruiters generally spend less than 10 seconds on each resume, which means for every line, you should be scrutinizing it and asking yourself, is this line helping me in any way, or is it just distracting from the other lines around it that are more important that I could be putting more emphasis on by getting rid of this line? All right, the last thing we need to talk about is applying for roles. There's a couple key questions that you need to ask yourself if you really wanna hone in on a technique that's going to give you the best results here. My first internship was all about doing mobile development, and the reason I got it was because I had prior experience with making my own iOS apps. If you have prior experience with certain technologies or languages, leverage that. It makes you a more compelling candidate. Internships are generally only three months or so, which means if you can ramp up faster and then contribute more meaningfully, that's gonna be great for the company. I definitely didn't do a good job with this as a freshman, but I learned my lesson after I almost didn't land my first internship. You should be checking for new job listings at least weekly so that you can get them while they're still fresh and definitely still open, uh, as well as making sure other things don't show up on top of them and then you miss some of the listings that happened a couple of weeks ago, for example. You should plan on starting this process in August. I know that probably sounds a little bit early, but even if there aren't that many listings yet, you wanna get in the habit of applying every week to all of the new jobs also may not really feel ready yet to interview in August, and that's okay, because some of these places, it might take a couple months to hear back. And if you do get an interview at one of them, it's just gonna give you more practice. And you don't wanna close off any doors to yourself 
even if you go in there and you don't do a good job on the interview, that's a lot more valuable to you than not getting that interview in the first place because you didn't even apply. Also, you don't need to be 100% qualified for everything you apply to, but you should also recognize which things you're completely unqualified for. For example, if they're looking for a PhD student who's proficient in machine learning, and your experience consists mostly of writing a few basic Python programs, uh, don't waste your 10 minutes on applying for that and find another job that's going to be a better fit for your experience. So, I didn't learn this lesson until my junior year, but you should be keeping track of every position that you apply to. This gives you a much better idea of where you are in the process at different companies, uh, and ensures that you don't apply to the same job listing multiple times. I've definitely done that, especially when they don't send you an email confirmation, and it also gives you an idea of how many places are still actively considering you. Obviously, this doesn't account for silent rejections because a lot of companies will do that, but if you've already been rejected from six places and you only apply to 10, then at the most, you have four outstanding applications. Applying online at sites like Glassdoor or Indeed or LinkedIn can feel a little bit like firing your application off into the void, but there are other ways that you can go about getting your foot in the door. One of the big ones is going to your college's career fairs. There's gonna be a lot of recruiters there all in one place, and even though a lot of them might tell you to apply online, because I know a lot of people are doing that these days, even if nine of them just tell you apply online or reject you, if you can get an in at just one of those places, then it's completely worth going. And on top of that, you're also gonna get more experience talking to recruiters, working on your pitch, and practicing your behavioral questions. Something else that's similar to this, uh, if your college has company recruiting events, you should definitely consider going to these. My college had them almost every day in a certain room on campus. Uh, it was a lot more low key, it's not nearly as stressful, people aren't all dressed up, it's mostly just kind of having a conversation with some recruiters, but you never know when one of these things is actually going to do something for you, case in point, my internship with Lockheed Martin stemmed from one of these. I'd applied online like seven times to all these different job listings. I spent 10 minutes waiting in line. I talked to the recruiter for five minutes. And out of that, I got an interview, which then translated into an internship. So you never know when one of these things is going to pan out. I had talked to lots of other companies at the career fair, didn't hear anything back from any of them, but I spent 15 minutes talking to Lockheed Martin, got me an interview, which then got me a job. So if that seemed like a lot of stuff that you need to do, it's because it was, but you probably don't need to do all of those things. If you took that first exercise seriously of really looking at your weaknesses and why you didn't get an internship last year, you can probably pick out that I didn't spend enough time working on my resume and it was sloppy and there were some typos, or I didn't practice any behavioral questions and I just kind of fumbled through all of them and I didn't come across the way I wanted to, or anything else. Just target those weaknesses, turn them into strengths or at least not weaknesses anymore, and you'll have a lot better luck next year. At this point, all I can say though is get a fire under you, just put in the time and the hard work, and this time next year, you'll have an internship and you'll never need to watch this video again. All right, if you're looking for more advice on how to land an internship, you can check out these videos where I go a little bit more in depth on some of the things I talked about here. Anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.